President Henry Martin, President of the Permanent Council, Ambassador Albert Ramdin, Assistant Secretary General, Ambassador Hugo De Sela, Chief of Staff, Permanent and Alternative Representatives of Member States, Permanent Observers, Representatives of Civil Society Organizations, Members of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, its Executive Secretary and Assistant Executive Secretary, the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Expression, the Secretariat Staff, Fellows and Interns present, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure as the President and on behalf of my colleagues to welcome you today to these proceedings to commemorate the closing of the 150th session of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, which began on March 20th. With me today are my colleagues, Commissioner Rosemary Antoine, the first Vice President, Commissioner Felipe Gonzalez, the second Vice President, as well as the former President, Commissioner Jose de Jesus Orozco, Rosa Maria Ortiz, Commissioner Paolo Vanucci and James Cavallaro. I think it's a sign of a robust relationship between states and the Commission that this is but one of a number of moments over the last two weeks that the Commission has had the opportunity to sit with representatives of member states. We highly value your presence and welcome you again. I wish to recognize Ambassador Ramdin, the Assistant Secretary General, and to offer the floor to him. Thank you, Thank you very much, Madam President, President of the Inter-American Human Rights Commission, Dr. Tracy Robinson. I want to acknowledge the presence of other members of the Inter-American Human Rights Commission, including the vice, first Vice President, second Vice President, the former Chair, and thank you very much, Senor Jose de Jesus Orozco, for your collaboration with the Secretariat over the past year during your term in office, and the other members of the Commission. Also recognize, of course, the Executive Secretariat and his team of the Inter-American Human Rights Commission, and the Special Rapporteur on the Freedom of Expression, Catalina Botero. Distinguished permanent representatives, distinguished permanent observers, ladies and gentlemen, Madam Chair of the Permanent Council Ambassador, Justin Henry Martin. On behalf of Secretary General Sulsa, I'd like to congratulate, first of all, Commissioner Tracy Robinson as the President of the Inter-American Human Rights Commission. Also to congratulate Dr. Rosemary Antoine as first Vice President and Dr. Felipe Gonzalez as second Vice President. Um, I believe it's noteworthy to state today that uh, probably for the first time in the history of the Inter-American Human Rights Commission, two CARICOM nationals will hold the highest office in the Commission itself. And if I may add to that, in the Secretariat by coincidence and temporary, also today, two Caribbean nationals, as Ambassador Henry Martin is Chairman of the Permanent Council, and I am in charge of the Secretariat in absence of Secretary General Sousa, temporarily. Um, so congratulations to the Commission for its, uh, its session, and also to memor uh, commemorate the, the 50 years of its creation of the Commission as such. And we all know that the ongoing work on the promotion and protection of human rights in the region is an ongoing process, and um, we look forward as a Secretary to support that process um, in collaboration with member states, in collaboration with the Inter-American Human Rights Commission and the Executive Secretariat in strengthening the institution. Madam President, distinguished ambassadors, the region's democratic processes should always be further co consolidated as we have achieved so much in that area over the past 30, 50 years. And as such, the participation of all citizens without distinction in policy decisions that affect them need to be included. And as we celebra celebrate, as I said, our progress, our focus must be on the work that remains to be done. At every session, the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights considers issues, petitions, cases and reports that largely bear out the inequality and exclusion to which large segments of the hemisphere's populations are subjected. The Commission's work through its thematic emphasis on women, children, 
people of African descent, indigenous peoples, migrant workers, and persons deprived of liberty, human rights defenders, and the recently added rights of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, transgender and intersex people is extremely important in ensuring that exclusion and barriers to the exercise and defense of every single right are reduced and eventually eliminated. I believe that the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights, speaking on behalf of Secretary Nsusa as well, has done its best to fulfill this mandate and to help bring about ethical and legal values of freedom, well-being, solidarity and equality for citizens of the region without any discrimination. Madam Chair, there is no question regarding the fact that democracy in the inter-American system in our countries is formally linked to human rights. It's full observance. It's a daily discipline that the people demand from governments and stakeholders to make that happen. At the same time, human development must also be part of our human rights agenda because basic levels of well-being, food, shelter, health and education and of public common goods like environmentally and environmental sustainability or protection against pandemic diseases are necessary for people to exercise their rights and because human development and democracy are mutually reinforcing. Human rights are based on the highest possible principle. The dignity of man, the inalienability of this principle admits no exceptions and without its full observance all other progress attained by a community is in our view meaningless. So we will not ensure peace in our region there will be no real justice in the Americas, and the observance of basic human rights will not bear its full fruit so long as there is a single man or woman in any of our countries with basic needs of food, housing, health, or education, or who, without basic needs of food, housing, health, and education, or, with, or who suffers uncertainty over the future of the children. I once again want to urge, request member states to continue supporting the Commission, both individually and through the political organs of the organizations of American states. I strongly believe that adherence to human rights principles can only be a win-win situation for all involved. I thank you very much, and again, wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Ambassador Ramdin. As you know, we've had a very busy two years and intense years at the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights both as member states, civil society, victims, and other actors interested in the system. We have been engaged in a process of dialogue facilitated by the Commission about how to improve our procedures and effectiveness while preserving our autonomy and institutional strength. This process demanded prudent and distinguished leadership, and we have benefited from the absolute best of both over the last two years. On behalf of my fellow commissioners, I'd like to express my recognition of and our debt to our outgoing president, Jesus Orozco, for his unstinting commitment to the commission and very able leadership during his period as president. Thank you very much, Jesus. On March 20th, two weeks ago, a new board of the commission was entrusted with the responsibility for leading its work. We are grateful as the new board to enjoy the support of our colleagues and of the dedicated staff of the Executive Secretariat. And we look forward to a productive 56th year of promoting and protecting human rights in the region, along with all the users of the Inter-American system. This is also the first session of a new composition of the Commission, as we are joined by Commissioners Vanuki and Cavallaro. And we have affirmed our commitment as a new composition to undertake the ever important functions of protecting and promoting human rights in all of the Americas. During the half century of our institutional existence, the Commission has been called to protect human rights in extremely serious situations affecting countries of the Americas. Currently, democratic processes have been strengthened and consolidated in many states. However, the effective enjoyment of human rights of all persons in every place in the Americas is still far from a reality. Today still, as the Commission has repeatedly observed, depending on who you are, your history, where you live, where you're moving to and from, what you do, or the crisis or conflict at that moment, your human dignity, 
may not be acutely recognized, your right to define your own life project not respected, or your efforts to protect the human rights of others systematically undermined. The situation of indigenous people, persons of African descent, lesbian, gay, trans, bisexual, and intersex persons, persons with disabilities, women, children, and adolescents, internally displaced persons, refugees, victims of trafficking and other forms of violence and exploitation remain of grave concern to the Commission. Human rights defenders continue to be the target of killings, attacks, threats, and other acts of harassment. As a general matter, the structural conditions for justice and securing human rights remain critical, and the Commission continues to underscore that an independent judiciary is essential for the full investigation and punishment of human rights violations, as well as to preserve the institutional framework which is fundamental in an effective democratic system. At the same time, the Commission continues to see and welcomes many advances and good practices implemented in the countries of the region. These are works in progress rather than final accomplishments, but they offer growing pathways to justice and freedom for all the inhabitants of the Americas, and the Commission wishes to encourage this. We have had a full agenda during this period of sessions, the 150th. We have held 55 hearings and 32 working meetings, a historic number of working meetings for the Commission. The day of working meetings which we held is aimed at facilitating the implementation of precautionary measures, compliance with recommendations we have made, and the friendly settlement procedures. The Commission very much appreciates the measures adopted by states and in collaboration with petitioners towards advancing compliance with recommendations and to the effectiveness of precautionary measures, both of which are key elements for the enjoyment of human rights. Our new colleagues, uh, one of them chaired 18 of the 32 meetings, another eight of the working meetings, and I'm afraid they have had a brutal initiation to the Commission. But along with the firm commitment which they have already demonstrated, they have also demonstrated capacities we value, openness to conciliation and dialogue, Commissioner Vanuki, a very sensible approach to doing justice, Commissioner Cavallaro. We have also, during this period of session, met with representatives of member states, including those of CARICOM, and also with civil society. We have adopted decisions relating to petitions, cases, precautionary measures, as well as other matters comprised in our mandate. These include the decision of the Commission during this period of session uh, to work towards the establishment of a special rapporteurship on economic, social, and cultural rights by the end of 2015. During our week of hearings and working meetings, we received information and testimonies on a range of situations that fall within the mandate of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. I wish to note two hearings that focused on the fight against impunity for violations of the past, as well as rep reparation programs for such violations. And for the first time, we also had hearings on sexual and reproductive rights of persons with disabilities and the impact of drug policies on human rights. We wish to thank the over 20 states and many civil society organizations and representatives that participated in the period of hearings. We also received oral arguments on the merits in three cases. Hearings remain a very important forum to address the main human rights issues facing the region. As you know, one great challenge we must overcome in the inter-American human rights system is the lack of human and financial resources to properly process and resolve the ever-increasing volume of petitions, cases, and precautionary measures, and to effectively discharge our monitoring functions and to act in a timely way on the mandates given to this organ by the political bodies of the OAS. We would like to highlight 
the important efforts made by the Secretary General to maintain and to improve our situation in terms of resources, especially given the complex financial situation in the OAS, the region, and the world. The Commission wants to also offer its special thanks to member states for the financial contributions they have specially made, as well as the many international agencies and organizations from the Americas and outside the region and states outside the region that have continued to support the Inter-American Commission. The Commission continues to call on member states to take measures that will ensure that the system is fully funded by the states of the region as set forth in several General Assembly resolutions. Strengthening the Inter-American human rights system requires at the front end, a collective commitment from states, which should be demonstrated by the universal ratification of regional human rights instruments. At the other end, we must achieve greater levels of compliance with the decisions of the Inter-American Commission and Court. Many member states have made substantial advances in recent years in protecting human rights, but we would ask that states deepen their commitment at both ends in undertaking their role as collective guarantors of the system. I want to thank each and all of you for your continued support of the Commission, for your presence here today, and I now officially close the 150th session of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. I wish to open the floor to the representatives of member states who may have observations or remarks which they wish to offer. Can I ask you to lift your country plate, which will be the easiest way of us acknowledging you. I recognize the Ambassador of Mexico. Thank you very much, Madam Commissioner President. Honorable Comisionada Presidenta Doctora Tracy Robinson, Honorables Comisionadas y Comisionados, Honorable Relator Especial para la Libertad de Expresión, Honorable Secretario Ejecutivo y Secretaria Ejecutiva Adjunta, mi delegación se complace por la exitosa conclusión del 150 periodo ordinario de sesiones de la Comisión Interamericana de Derechos Humanos, el primero de este año que marca el 55 aniversario de vida de este órgano fundamental para la promoción y protección de los derechos humanos en todo el continente. Una vez más fuimos testigos del exhaustivo, responsable y dedicado trabajo que despliegan tanto las comisionadas y comisionados como todos los que colaboran en la Secretaría Ejecutiva de la Comisión a lo largo de casi tres semanas. De ello, dan cuenta las 55 audiencias públicas, decenas de reuniones de trabajo con estados y peticionarios, la presentación de tres informes temáticos, sesiones diarias de deliberación y los diálogos sostenidos por la Comisión Interamericana de Derechos Humanos, tanto con estados como con organizaciones de la sociedad civil. Es por ello que México extiende su más amplio reconocimiento a todas y todos los que hacen posible la labor de la Comisión Interamericana de Derechos Humanos. Asimismo, una vez más, México valora la oportunidad que brindan los periodos de sesiones para entablar un diálogo abierto, respetuoso y franco, tanto con la Comisión como con los distintos individuos, organizaciones de la sociedad civil e instituciones académicas que solicitaron audiencias públicas relacionadas con México. Sin duda, las audiencias y reuniones de trabajo nos dejan con tareas y trabajo a desarrollar para atender casos y situaciones específicas, así como retos estructurales que aún enfrentamos. Pero también nos permiten compartir con todos los actores del sistema los avances y buenas prácticas que seguimos registrando en esta materia. Es así que seguimos avanzando, guiados siempre por un enfoque de colaboración 
en la construcción de más y mejores condiciones para el afianzamiento de una genuina cultura de respeto y protección a los derechos humanos en México. Por último, quiero subrayar la importancia que asigna México a que se consolide la inmejorable práctica de sostener espacios de discusión entre la Comisión Interamericana de Derechos Humanos, los Estados y la sociedad civil sobre temas relativos al fortalecimiento del sistema interamericano de derechos humanos durante los periodos de sesiones. Convencidos como estamos de que todos los actores que participamos del sistema perseguimos en ese mismo objetivo, es indudable que podemos procurar y privilegiar en cada sesión posible el debate serio y responsable al respecto. Concluyo diciendo, señora Presidencia, que el tema del fortalecimiento económico, social, jurídico, político del de sistema interamericano de derechos humanos se ha constituido en uno de los temas centrales del proceso de visión estratégica que está en curso y por lo tanto ha requerido de la atención de todos los Estados miembros que integran este grupo de trabajo con miras primero a la Asamblea General de Asunción Paraguay y luego a la extraordinaria de presupuesto de octubre de este año. Muchas gracias, señora Presidenta. Are there any other requests for the floor? I recognize the delegation of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Ambassador Prince. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. I speak on behalf of the delegations of CARICOM and would like, first of all, to congratulate you in the new role that you have assumed as President of the Commission and also the uh, first Vice President of the Commission, Commissioner Antoine. As CARICOM countries, we're very happy and proud to see uh, the leadership which CARICOM is taking at the Commission. At the same time, we would like to take this opportunity to salute the outgoing President, Jose de Jesus Orozco of Mexico, and for the work that you have done during uh, your, your presidency. CARICOM has had the opportunity to interact earlier this week with the Commission, and we've had um, an excellent exchange with the Commissioners. We are especially encouraged by the growing commitment on the part of the Commission to work with CARICOM, which has been illustrated by the designation of five commissioners to cover the 14 CARICOM member states, whereas previously there was just one commissioner that was doing that job. We recognize the capacity of the Commission to assist us in enhancing domestic policies in relation to a range of issues, including but not limited to the rights of indigenous peoples, discrimination and race issues, sexual violence against women, prison and pers prisons and persons, of, persons deprived of liberty. Several of our CARICOM countries, in fact, during our meeting, indicated their interest to the commissioners in having the commission provide technical assistance on strengthening policies in these and many other areas. So we think that we have a very um, fruitful uh, relationship going forward. And again, on behalf of CARICOM, I just want to thank all seven commissioners for the work that you have been doing and your full engagement with CARICOM. Thank you. I recognize the delegation of Jamaica, Ambassador Vassiani. Th thank you, uh, President Robinson. Um, I would like to endorse all that has been said by the distinguished representative of St. Vincent and the Grenadines on behalf of CARICOM and add my words of congratulations to uh, President Robinson Vice President Antoine, Second Vice President Ortiz, and members of the Commission. I would also like to say thanks to uh, Commissioner José de Jesús Orozco for his term of office as President. Uh, we, Jamaica, had very good relations with uh, P President Jesús Orozco. I, I would also like to thank 
the members of the Secretariat with whom we have had a good working relationship over the past year. Um, the members of the Secretariat, Emilia Alvarez Icaza and his team, have been very accessible to us and have uh, provided guidance on, on a number of tricky issues. I would like to say this morning um, that CARICOM associates the OAS system primarily with development issues and with human rights issues. And so for us, we are always keen to, to note relationships between development and human rights and other pillars of the OAS system as well, but with emphasis on development and human rights. Uh, for this 150th period of the work of commission, uh, Jamaica has made two appearances um, before the commission. One, a uh, private, uh, an understandably private uh, appearance in relation to girls in detention uh, in Jamaica. And secondly, an appropriately public meeting where transparency prevailed in relation to the follow-up of the Commission on the general human rights situation in Jamaica. With respect to the general human rights situation in Jamaica, the Commission noted issues in particular concerning LGBTI uh, persons, uh, the anti-gang legislation that has recently been introduced in the country, and the very serious problem of extrajudicial killings, among other things. For us, these are challenges that we have to face, and we appreciate the guidance and perspective of the Commission in relation to the humane treatment of persons, ways in which we can reconcile the demands of order and security with the requirements of human rights, ways in which we can reconcile the requirements of human rights with majority perspectives that are based on morality and which may not entirely be consistent with perspectives on human rights, and ways in which we can promote and protect human rights when faced with serious financial constraints. So on a wide variety of issues, we appreciate the guidance of the Commission. Uh, we attach particular importance to the right to life, freedom of expression, freedom from inhumane and degrading punishment or treatment, gender equality, racial equality. And we are heartened by the decision of the Commission on Human Rights to enhance its work in relation to economic and social rights. Finally, Madam President, we join the Commission in encouraging the promotion and protection of human rights in the context of budgetary constraints. We urge the Commission to continue its efforts in deepening its interaction with all states and, from our perspective in CARICOM, deepening its interaction with CARICOM states. It is a pleasure to see you as President. Um, President Robinson, it is a pleasure to see uh, you as Vice President um, Commissioner Antoine, but we know that the organization is a regional one which has participation from CARICOM but, and other states as well. We also take pleasure in seeing members of the Commission rise to the highest levels from other areas. For us, this is a representative organization and we think that that level of representation should be reflected not only at the Commission level, but more substantially also at the level of the Secretariat. You know this is a bee in my bonnet, President, and I will continue to press in that regard. And finally, I would encourage those states that are not yet party to the American Convention on Human Rights to give serious thought to joining that process. Uh, it is of great value, both internally and for the region. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Uh, is there any other delegation which wishes to make remarks this morning? 
I recognize the delegation of Peru, Ambassador. Muchas gracias. Muy buenos, buenos días todavía. La delegación de Perú quiere saludar a la nueva directiva de la Comisión Interamericana, felicitar al comisionado Orozco, paz presidente de la Comisión, por su trabajo, saludar a los nuevos miembros que se integran al trabajo de la Comisión, al profesor Banucci, al profesor Cavallaro, y quisiera reiterar el compromiso por los derechos humanos. Creo que como países que estamos construyendo democracia, que estamos fortaleciendo nuestros procesos internos, es importante que tengamos un espacio como la Comisión Interamericana que permita justamente llamar la atención cuando tenga que llamarse la atención. El día de hoy estamos atravesando un proceso en América Latina y en América en general en el hemisferio que busca fortalecer estos procesos. Creo que todas las delegaciones han manifestado en general la necesidad de que sigamos construyendo este proceso y mi delegación y mi país continuará en esa vía. Ha habido una demanda a la Comisión que es plantear el acompañamiento a los países. Es decir, la necesidad de que podamos tener en la Comisión también a un aliado que permita a nuestros gobiernos y a nuestros estados avanzar en mejorar los derechos humanos. En los últimos 10 años, en América Latina, 50 millones de personas salieron de la pobreza. En mi país, en los últimos 10 años, de 57% de pobres, hemos pasado a 27% de pobres. Es decir, casi hemos reducido a la mitad el número de pobres en el Perú. Y creo que esa es la vía que tenemos que optar en nuestros países, de luchar por la inclusión, luchar contra la pobreza, que son los elementos y los retos que tenemos como países el día de hoy. Y en ese sentido, me complace muchísimo que la próxima asamblea de la organización, a realizarse en Asunción, Paraguay, sea justamente sobre el reto que tenemos en nuestros países de desarrollo e inclusión social. Y en esa línea, creo que el papel de la Comisión por dar también contenido a los derechos económicos, sociales y culturales, es un reto que tenemos el día de hoy enfrente. El acompañamiento que la Comisión puede dar en ese sentido es importante. También en otros temas, como libertad de expresión, hemos tenido en estos días sesiones sobre este tema a partir de audiencias pedidas por particulares, por entidades, en fin, que nos pone también como reto en la democracia, ver cómo también aportamos todos en el ámbito de la libertad de expresión, que es uno de los aspectos centrales justamente para construir democracia. También mi delegación, señora presidenta, quiere exhortar a aquellos países que todavía no han suscrito a la Convención Americana, que lo hagan. Creo que es un espacio importante en el cual todos tenemos que comprometernos y seguiremos también insistiendo en que esta línea se pueda mantener y ojalá en el Consejo Permanente, en la Asamblea, en diversos espacios podamos los países sugerir, recomendar, exhortar que prontamente suscriban la Convención. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Are there any other requests? Can I recognize Minister Brazil, the delegation? Obrigado, Senhora Presidente. É, apenas muito rapidamente para saudar uh, a Comissão, uh, reiterar as nossas felicitações pela presidência uh, e pela vice-presidência e pelas vice-presidências uh, assumidas recentemente. Também saudar uh, a presença dos novos comissários Paulo Vanucci e James Cavallaro. Enfim, saudar a todos os comissários, a relatora de liberdade de expressão 
e a, a Secretaria Executiva igualmente pelo trabalho que vem desenvolvendo. Eu gostaria também de fazer uma saudação especial ao ex-presidente Jesus Orozco. Eu acho que o comissário Jesus Orozco esteve à frente da comissão num momento bastante difícil, bastante intenso, em que tivemos um processo de discussão sobre a reforma do sistema interamericano de direitos humanos, Uh, e o, o trabalho desenvolvido pelo presidente, pelo então presidente Jesus Orozco, uh, foi fundamental, inclusive, para que tivéssemos uma discussão equilibrada, baseada no bom senso e no interesse mútuo de chegarmos a um entendimento que permitisse uh, a melhor atuação da Comissão Interamericana de Direitos Humanos, na garantia justamente dos direitos uh, de nossos cidadãos. Essa questão uh, se mostrou fundamental na, no aspecto do, da importância desse diálogo entre os Estados e a Comissão. É, como eu mencionei na, na nossa reunião da segunda-feira passada, é, essa oportunidade de termos esse contato, de dialogarmos e de, de chegarmos a um entendimento uh, comum é, é muito importante, porque muitas vezes não temos a chance de é, ou explicar bem a, as nossas posições ou de entendermos também as posições da comissão. Então, esse diálogo ele nos permite é, ouvirmos de, de, de parte a parte uh, as posições e argumentos e dessa forma chegarmos a um entendimento muito mais equilibrado e muito mais efetivo e que nos permite um trabalho uh, melhor, tanto como Estados, tanto como Comissão. E eu gostaria também de fazer uma referência uh, ao secretário executivo, Uh, Emílio Álvares e Caça, e alguns uh, representantes aqui já mencionaram isso, uh, a, a disponibilidade da Secretaria Executiva para esse contato com os Estados, eu gostaria de fe felicitá-lo também uh, por estar sempre uh, disponível uh, uh, para um entendimento, para uma conversa, é, o secretário Emílio nos ajudou consideravelmente nos últimos meses por conta da Comissão Nacional da Verdade no Brasil. É, há um, um, um trabalho interessante e a, e a comissão nos auxiliou, inclusive, com uma com uma extensa pesquisa feita pela Secretaria Executiva. E eu gostaria de deixar o meu agradecimento público a essa a cooperação. Gostaria também de mencionar a importância do tema é, LGBTI para o Brasil e, e anunciar que, mais uma vez, o Brasil é, apresentará uma resolução sobre o tema, que, evidentemente, vamos negociar uh, com todos os demais países, na expectativa de que tenhamos, sim, um, né, uma negociação uh, transparente, uh, efetiva, aberta e bastante honesta, no sentido de que todos tenhamos condições uh, de nos expressar quando da negociação e que não deixemos para um último momento qualquer uh, resistência ou qualquer uh, dificuldade que possa surgir no que diz respeito a esse tema. Por fim, uh, gostaria de reiterar à comissão o apoio do Brasil ao, ao trabalho que vem sendo feito desde o final do, do processo de negociação das reformas, eh, creio que temos, temos tido um trabalho entre a Comissão e todos os Estados muito dinâmico, eh, que nos permitiu avançar em muitas coisas e, e como eu mencionei também na última reunião, apenas para finalizar, creio que a questão do financiamento é fundamental, mas lembrando mais uma vez 
que não apenas recursos uh, é, servirão para solucionar as dificuldades da comissão. É preciso também uh, uma metodologia de trabalho que permita uma priorização uh, de, de petições uh, que sejam, talvez, e isso é uma discussão que os próprios comissários estão tendo, que sejam uh, modelo, uh, que sirvam como pontos de referência para uh, todo o volume imenso de petições eh, que chega à, à Comissão de Direitos Humanos. Então, mais uma vez, apenas declarar o apoio do Brasil ao trabalho da Comissão e nos colocar também à disposição da CIDH para esses futuros contatos. Muito obrigado. Thank you very much, Minister da Costa. Uh, I wanted to recognize the delegation of Paraguay and its ambassador. Gracias, señora presidenta. Eh, realmente no tenía planeado intervenir, pero este, quiero, no quiero dejar pasar la oportunidad de felicitarla y darle los mejores augurios para el ejercicio de la presidencia al frente de la comisión, al igual que al comisionado Orozco, reconocerle el gran trabajo que desarrolló al frente de la presidencia, darle la bienvenida a los comisionados James Calabalaro y Pedro Banuki, sobre todo eh, al comisionado Banuki porque tiene a su cargo la Relatoría de Paraguay, eh, agradecer la, la buena predisposición eh, para llevar adelante los temas de derechos humanos relativos a Paraguay, comisionado, muchas gracias. Eh, el hacer referencia también a que en ocasión de la asamblea de, de, del cuadragésimo cuarto periodo ordinario de sesiones eh, vamos a tener en, en Asunción el, el gran placer de desarrollar el seminario interamericano eh, referente a buenas prácticas y en la cual se van a abordar eh, el tema de los derechos económicos, sociales y culturales. Tengo conocimiento, no sé si soy oportuno o no, y si no soy, me disculpan, de que la Comisión resolvió la, la creación de la relatoría de los DES eh, a un muy corto plazo, tengo entendido. Eh, felicitamos esa, esa, esa decisión. Eh, al igual que el Seminario Nacional sobre Buenas Prácticas en tema de soluciones amistosas, que también va a tener eh, lugar en, en Asunción. Eh, y nuevamente afirmar el compromiso de Paraguay eh, y poner a conocimiento también eh, en forma pública eh, del ofrecimiento para que la Comisión sesione en el mes de julio del año 2015. Los esperamos eh, con los brazos abiertos en, en Asunción. Gracias, comisionada. Thank you very much, Ambassador. I wish to recognize the delegation of Argentina and its representative. Gracias, Presidente. Queremos saludar nosotros también a los nuevos miembros de la Comisión y a su nueva conformación. Deseamos señalar que reconocemos los exhaustivos trabajos que la Comisión ha desarrollado en este periodo de sesiones en la promoción y protección de los derechos humanos. Observamos también con beneplácito la variedad de cuestiones temáticas que se han abordado en las audiencias. En particular, Argentina desea reconocer el espacio que se concedió a la Procuradora General de la Nación Argentina para presentar las buenas prácticas en la Administración de Justicia que se vienen desarrollando desde la reforma de la Constitución Nacional en 1994, que corroboran nuestro compromiso con los derechos humanos. Asimismo, deseamos agradecer y reconocer el espacio de diálogo abierto por la Comisión en relación con la ejecución de planes, del Plan Estratégico 2011-2016, los avances alcanzados tras los resultados de la Asamblea General Extraordinaria del 22 de marzo de 2013 sobre fortalecimiento del Sistema Interamericano de Derechos Humanos, 
para escuchar las propuestas y aportes de los Estados para la elaboración del Plan Estratégico 2016-2021 y en ese sentido felicitar también a la Comisión por haber recibido los comentarios de los Estados respecto de qué esperan del funcionamiento de la Comisión. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Are there any other requests for the floor? If not, um, I wish to, to recognize the many observations made by member states, the welcoming of the opportunity for continued dialogue between the states and the Commission. The Commission remains deeply committed to continuing the dialogue which it has engaged with states over the past few years and to provide as many opportunities as we can um, for states and the Commission to continue to talk about its work. Uh, we also welcome the commitment um, demonstrated today to human rights and to the work of the Inter-American Human Rights System. And we recognize and are receptive to the call for full inclusion and participation by CARICOM. And as you heard, we are attentive to the call We also highly value the observations about the new mandate which the Commission has adopted. It already has a unit on economic, social and cultural rights, um, but plans in the next year um, to create a special rapporteurship which will undertake this cross-cutting responsibility. Uh, I also want to signal in response to the observations about backlog and procedural reform that the Commission also in this period of sessions approved um, internal reforms which should significantly with the current resources improve our outputs and reduce procedural backlog in the system. Um, with those observations to say that the Commission welcomes the opportunity to have further dialogue with states in its 156th session and the one which comes after, the commitment of the new composition and the board um, to continue the good work which has been started and done um, by our predecessors and to work closely with the staff. Um, we have represented here this morning um, perhaps the entire staff of the Commission, um, a large number of our interns Um, sitting on both sides of the room. And to again thank you for your support. Thank you for being here and looking forward to the next moment where we will have an opportunity to dialogue and to again officially close the session, the 105th. Thank you very much.